So um, thank you so much. And we officially now begin with this uh, microgrants learning webinar uh, for our microgrants cycle of 2023. And I want to thank all of you for contributing uh, to this cycle of the microgrants uh, 2023 and, um, and joining us today in this uh, webinar to share about your projects, activities, um, key outcomes, achievements, which um, we as a movement have achieved uh, during the microgrants cycle 2023. So before we proceed, um, uh, in the beginning, I will request um, our president here, Rubina Alamboya. Uh, Rubina, if you can uh, say a welcome to all of the participants for five minutes. A welcome, uh, encouraging note, a keynote for Hello. all micro grantees. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Waka, and thank you so much, uh, Richard, and everyone from the TCI Secretariat. We, yes, as uh, micro grantees and also as members of TCI, it is a great opportunity. For us to have an opportunity to come together as members of TCI and as people working together for a common goal. It is all about inclusion of us and all our members, yes, in the communities. So we really appreciate, I'm very grateful to God for the author of life for each one of us that we are still breathing and we are able to continue serving the communities. I want to thank you all for making every effort to be here on this call. We cannot take it for granted because we know there are so many things happening in the world. And I know there are many things that each one of us has put aside to give priority to this meeting. When we meet like this, it strengthens our family ties. We are a family, TCI, <laughs> TCI Global. We are building, we are a family. And the, uh, our working relationship get, uh, get strengthened. And whatever we call them, the codes of connection get stronger every time we meet and we are able to hear one another's voice and also to get to know what is happening in another region, in another state, in another country. So I want to welcome you so much. And I believe that we learn a lot. Personally, we learn a lot by hearing what is happening. And it's like envisioning. There's a way our eyes open even more to things that maybe we had not thought about, but our friends elsewhere have thought about them. Thank you so much for serving the community of persons with psychosocial disabilities. And thank you so much for uh, staying focused on the issues of inclusion for persons with disabilities. May we, I wish you all good deliberations and may you continue in the spirit of peace, of love and joy for us all. God bless you. Thank you so much, Rubina. Uh, it is always uh, amazing and so so good to hear from you. Uh, all of these encouragements um, as a senior leader you bring to us, uh, to all of the young ones in TCI. And yes, TCI, we are as a family and uh, we need to strengthen, we need to join hands and grow more. And we are growing at a very, 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 very rapid pace. So thank you so much, Rubina. Um, so just to give uh, some um, uh, context, uh, like since 2019, the Secretariat has been witnessing enormous interest in TCI memberships and program opportunities um, for uh, the our OPD members, for our OPD members to you know work at the national level for inclusion of people with psychosocial disabilities in various disability and development uh, uh, processes, thematics. And for more than a decade, TCI has mentored and worked with its members on focusing on specific thematic areas uh, to lead advocacy initiatives and partnerships um, uh, with cross-disability stakeholders, including the cross-disabilities, 
the civil society organizations, governments, uh, national human rights commissions, um, UN agencies, um, um, specifically on community inclusion and right to live independently in the community. And in some countries, uh, TCI uh, saw the emergence of strong leaders, how it was not possible for them to, you know, uh, sustain their work um, uh, due to lack of mentorship or even some small funding was not available because in TCI, we have a core uh, role and focus in mobilizing OPDs and establishing OPDs and providing with them, uh, providing them with the uh, with uh, support and mentorship to so that they can, you know, mobilize a movement at the national level. Um, and in this, um, uh, 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 and having a core focus on empowering national OPDs of persons with psychosocial disabilities, uh, the Secretariat uh, initiated an idea, and I thank Bhargavi, and I remember her here. Um, um, for mobilizing and initiating this idea of providing OPD support grants and micro grants for its member organizations. Um, it, it started as a next step of evolution uh, for supporting uh, national advocacy uh, in member countries and also a mechanism to seek financial te and technical assistance from the TCI Secretariat. The grants are provided to um, its members based on the policy priority areas identified for the national advocacy. Um, uh, the Secretariat have also, you know, um, worked um, uh, in the Secretariat itself to develop various program um, management and monitoring tools for the member OPDs um, for building organizational capacity and establishing their own governance systems. Uh, this process has ultimately helped our fellows and members of TCI to situate themselves in the center of the cross-disability movements at the national level to begin advocacy and reclaim independence and be included in the community. <clears throat> we as persons with psychosocial disabilities were not in, uh, involved in the um, policy discussions during the COVID times uh, and we were left behind during the policy discussions. Um, the response programs were not inclusive. People living in institutions were at a greater risk, losing jobs and we were unable to access services in the community. And TCI started with its first program in 2019 during the COVID-19 pandemic um, and completed a full cycle of micro grants for six months. Um, and we wish uh, that we don't get to see again such pandemics in the coming future. It was really a hard time for all of us uh, and for the world. And thank God that we are now back to normal. Um, so to address this issue, uh, TCI piloted its first micro grants program to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and um, uh, it, and after a successful uh, cycle, uh, TCI did a second uh, round of uh, micro grant cycle in 2021 and 2022. So during the second cycle, uh, TCI conducted a situation analysis for uh, uh, and with its uh, members at the national level on different core thematic areas such as community support systems, uh, work and employment, social protection, COVID-19, et cetera. And, and, and some really beautiful reports uh, came out from the cycle. Even, the, even the, uh, the learning webinar video is uploaded on our YouTube channel. So if any of you want to access, um, so you can visit the YouTube channel and you can uh, you can you know uh, see what happened during the other last two cycles of the micro grants. So there is a huge issue, um, as you all know, and we have been advocating for our identity. And in the society, we are still tagged as um, mental Ill, uh, mental patients, um, persons of unsound mind, mad persons, and etc. And we are still confined to mental health systems and which takes away our legal capacity to explore opportunities, take, take risks, make our own decisions, enjoy all fundamental human rights on an equal basis to others. Institutionalization is um, increasing um, massively and there are countries where youth with psychosocial disabilities are commonly found in mental uh, youth with psychosocial disabilities, women with psychosocial disabilities, uh, people with psychosocial disabilities with neurodiverse identities uh, from LGBTQI communities. We are still, you know, commonly found in, you know, all of these rehab centers, 
social uh, social um, social care institutions mental asylums psychiatric hospitals nursing homes and other variety of care uh, institution and we you know uh, face a long term confinement and isolation so to tackle this and um, and this has been like in the core works of tci uh, to deinstitutionalize uh, advocate for the deinstitutionalization and um and advocate for the community inclusion of people with psychosocial disabilities uh, so uh, uh, concurrent to this strategy uh, um and to push the agenda of deinstitutionalization and community inclusion um our focus of the third um, uh, micro grant cycle was to uh, keep the thematic areas to deinstitutionalization and community inclusion because recently there was a uh, di guidelines was launched in which tci played a very vital role in working with the crpd committee uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the development of the di guidelines and it is a great tool and we wanted that tool uh, to reach to our members and also to other stakeholders with whom you have been working at the national level so that those stakeholders those stakeholders can work on the institutionalization processes in collaboration with our member organizations so um and we hope that uh, the purpose have been achieved and the di guidelines and the agenda of community inclusion uh, providing by providing community support systems and providing community support services have been uh, reached to, to many of the stakeholders to through this micro grants cycle and um uh, in later in the session today we will be hearing from you like uh some of the questions which we shared with you in advance um how the micro grants uh, cycle has supported in taking the uh, agenda of deinstitutionalization followed by the di guidelines and community inclusion of persons with disabilities persons with psychosocial disabilities forward in your countries and in your communities so before proceeding i would request um uh, fiza to play a small video and we will then proceed towards uh, the presentations from the from the micro grantees fiza over to you sure uh, can let me know if you could hear it let me start it Um, can you uh, listen to the music? No, it's not. Can you play it? Fiza, have you played the video? Uh, yes, I have. Let me stop again. You can't listen. No, 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 Fiza, we cannot we cannot see the video. Yeah, so what we can do is uh what we can do is uh we can play this in the uh end of the webinar and by that time we can you know fix it so whatever the uh the technical issues are we can fix it and then we can move forward okay sure yeah so with this i would request uh imha to take the floor first and share about uh your activities and how the cycle has supported uh at the national level for advocacy on the given thematics uh, learnings about the di and ci process in your country and some impactful moments of uh the micro grants project over to you nena okay thank you wakar uh, so first good morning or maybe afternoon and good evening to all of the participants in here uh, it's a great honor to be 
here with you today. Uh, first of all, my name is Nena Hutahayan. I'm an advocacy officer from IMHA. For the 2023 uh, microgrants, IMHA is embark a journey to address a pressing issue ensuring the interest of persons with psychosocial disability in drafting of derivative regulations on Anti-Sexual Violence Act. Uh, this endeavor encompasses three government regulations and four presidential regulations. This is a crucial step for us because in Indonesia, uh, the, the implementation, uh, uh, in Indonesia legal frameworks, the implementation of new laws highest hints upon the existence of these regulations. So with uh, IMHA thinks that we need to be participate in this project and we work with TCI for this. Uh, uh, first, why this project is important? Uh, because we find in Indonesia, uh, maybe in all of the social care mental institutions uh, in internationals too, that in mental asylums or in social care mental institutions or any other space like uh, that, that have the their, their private uh, settings, uh, individuals, countless individuals face the harrowing reality of sexual harassment, that uh, uh, reality of sexual harassment and violence, despite the staggering number of reported cases by the National Commissions of Violence Against Women, there is uh, 2,228 uh, instances of sexual violence happen in Indonesia. Uh, but only uh, only seven to cases uh, with the people with psych, uh, with people with a uh, woman with disabilities. It's not uh, really have the reported cases about the woman with psychosocial disabilities. Seven uh, seventy two cases is about people with psych, uh, people with disability. Uh, in this, uh, because of this, uh, Indonesia, uh, I mentioned things we need to participate in this, uh, in this process. But reg uh, regrettably, the formulations of implementing regulation marginalize of uh, the voices of people with psychosocial disability and disability group itself. This, despite of our concern effort, facilitate through the national coalition of organization for. In Indonesia, we have uh, a coalitions of, uh, 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 no, not sorry, uh, about the commission, the national commissions about the disability persons, but they not yet uh, ask us to genuine inv invitation to listen to the challenge, barriers, and needs of people with psychosocial disability or people with disability communities. This, this exclusion perpetuates the notion that women with disabilities are incapable, thereby invalidating our experience and trauma. Nevertheless, despite this challenge, IMHA, alongside disability organization, has diligently compiled and drafted comprehensive documents reflecting our perspective and recommendation. This has been present in limited hearings with the key representative of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights in our government and the Ministry of Women and Power and Child Protection. Uh, additionally, we have disseminated these documents to the relevant ministries with the hope that they will integrate into all seven derivative regulations thereby ensuring the comprehensive protections of persons with disability, particularly those with psychosocial with disabilities within institutions. Our, as, our aspirations extend beyond mere legislative compliance. We envision a future where all residents of mental care institutions can live independently and interact inclusively with society. To this end, IMHA, in collaboration with government of Indonesia, has established the working group for the respect, protection, fulfillment, enforcement, and advances of human rights for, for, for persons with psychosocial, or we know it as the working group uh, P5HAM-PDM. These coalitions of ministry agencies and disability organization and civil society, and regardless of ability and can live 
of dignity, autonomy, and fulfillment. That's all my presentations. Is it okay, Waka? Yes, um, this is perfect. Thank you so much uh, yeah. um, for highlighting the uh, collaborations. And I'm really sorry for the inconvenience going on in between. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. I am not sure. So yeah, so thank you so much for sharing all of the works um, which you have been conducting uh, oh. regarding the sexual violence against women with social disabilities in Indonesia. Okay. Um, um, yeah, and any questions from uh, the from the group? From the micro grantees, if there are any like questions from IMHA. Uh, about the, is it the participants can get my point or I need to repeat? Yeah, I think they got your points. Oh yeah. <laughs> because I was, I, I, I got out of the Zoom room twice. Okay. But yeah. So with this, like, uh, we'll move to the next presentation. Um, thank you, Nena, for the amazing presentation from your end. And I would now request Triumph team to uh, share about their project. Hello. Yes, Caleb, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, Caleb, I can hear you. Can you hear us? No. Oh, okay. Just, just, just a second. Can um. Okay. Uh, sorry. You can now hear me well. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Waka. Um, this is Caleb Alambia for Triumph. Um, right now, I'm 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 just a project assistant. I was a project assistant to the micro grants uh, of 2023 for this year. Um, so uh, we we did the project with this year around the institutionalization, and uh, uh, the main objective was to ascertain the readiness. Um, I'll just, I'm just giving a clear picture. Um, I, I know more of my other colleagues who share, but it was mainly wanted to ascertain the readiness of um, of uh, the readiness of the local government actors in in the implementation of the DI guidelines that had been passed earlier. So, yeah, uh, we did. We had a few activities. That we did, yeah. And uh, one of them, one of them was we did a rapid assessment, um, and that rapid assessment was to 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 see to really just check. Um, Oscar will share more about it because Oscar was actually he did that rapid assessment to share a few a few of the details, just a few details of what we did. But we did a rapid assessment, and uh, with the rapid assessment, we 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 uh, it was meant to. To, to 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 really know the gap or to ascertain how ready these local actors are in implementing the DI guidelines. Or we also wanted to know the extent to which they actually were 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 informed about these guidelines. So yeah, so that's just one of the things we did. And um then uh yeah then we also did a capacity building training about the DI guidelines. And also we did um bilateral meetings with the different local government offices where we, we went and visited them to their offices, each office. We looked at many, we looked at the offices that were very uh, key in implementing these guidelines. For example, we looked at the community development office. We visited them. Uh, we went to the town club. He's, he's in charge of planning in, uh, in every town or city. Um, uh, we, we visited the education offices, the Education. We visited health, the, edu the health uh, office. So, yeah. So I'm just giving a brief of some of the activities. I've uh, just shared a few. Just those are the the major activities were there. Um. Um. So there were three. 
at uh, a rapid assessment bilateral meetings. So and also we did a capacity building, capacity building, uh, I would call it workshop about the DIA guidelines. Um, I'm gonna ask Oscar to just add on that because I haven't gotten so much in details, but I'm gonna ask Oscar to add on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Caleb, for the update. And TCI, thanks so much for bringing such a platform. It enhances learning um, for the grantees. And of course, it is also going to guide us to get uh, the best practices from other jurisdictions that we can incorporate in order to develop uh, the psychosocial movement uh, in Uganda. So as the Caleb has emphasized, um, our project was around um, the DI guidelines and specifically we are looking at leaving no one behind uh, in this project because we are thinking how best can persons with psychosocial disabilities be incorporated in the development process uh, by enhancing the right to independent living as enshrined under Article 19, but also uh, how uh, we can leverage on the passage of the DI guidelines uh, to realize that right. So of course, key to this was to target uh, the stakeholders in Ginger City uh, around the process because the stakeholders in Ginger City were known for um, carrying or transferring persons with psychosocial disabilities uh, from the town setting to a particular confined place. And so we wanted to, one, engage them in terms of their knowledge about the DI guidelines, but also how they can utilize those DI guidelines to enhance the right to independent living by of course engaging with the community to support persons with psychosocial disabilities. So that being the position, we set out to do that rapid assessment. It was a rapid assessment, very quick, and it was restricting the number of participants because of the resources, but also secondly, around the time frame that was allocated to that assignment. So, so as the intention was, I uh, wanted to find out the knowledge about the DI guidelines from the key departments within the within the district within the city. But secondly, also to see how best these guidelines can be utilized to enhance the right to independent living for persons with psychosocial disabilities. So um, we reached out to quite um, uh, a number of respondents, but key coming from those departments that I have earlier on mentioned. As, as Caleb emphasized, we had to target the key uh, departments uh, which were akin to uh, the development process because it happened to be at the time when we are also thinking of how best do we integrate the psychosocial kind of disability within the mainstream disability work within the city. So the report was released. And of course, most of the respondents, the report notes, they did not uh, or had a, 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 a minute understanding of the guidelines. But for those who did understand them, they were actually looking at them from the theoretical point of view. For example, the medical officer within the city, for him, he actually confessed to have actually gotten to know those within uh, the, the medical school. And so having gotten the report, the other key thing was, how do we work with these departments to ensure that Persons with psychosocial disabilities live independently in the community, but through the support provided by these departments to strengthen the community support systems. So that being the position, we sought to reach out on bilateral meetings, and we also had to seek out those engagements with the different departments within the district, within the city. 
because they had participated within the DI guidelines and so to that uh, within the within the rapid assessment and so we wanted to strengthen their engagement with us further on how best they can utilize the DI guidelines so we had the bilateral meetings with the department of health with the department of education and then with the department of the community based uh, development and of course, also key was to look at the town clerk's office because as an administrative uh, office within the city, it was responsible for the allocation of the resources that would be available. But also very key, uh, we had to think of engaging with the political wing. So to this end, we engaged with the mayor's office and some few councillors representing persons with disabilities within Ginger City. And so the end result was we wanted to get a clear roadmap and a joint strategy on how we can engage as, as, as Triumph Mental Health Support and Recovery Program on one side, but also the different departments. And I think I am happy to note that there was a very strong collaboration that was created to continue this work, even with the minimum resources that were available. And of course, for us to strengthen this further, we actually thought of coming up with a strategic training of all these identified participants or stakeholders in Ginger City, coming from the, the different departments, but then also some few representatives of civil society and OPDs within Ginger City. And so we brought out this training and the key thing was we wanted to see how the participants can utilize the DI guidelines to realize the implementation or the realization of the right to independent living under Article 19. So that training also came up with few action points that these stakeholders would take to ensure that the issue of independent living, the right to independent living for persons with psychosocial disabilities in Ginger is realized. So briefly, that's what I can add. Um, Robina, Caleb, you can continue. I think Oscar has dropped off because of the internet issue. The network, yeah. Sorry, even me at one moment, I think you realized I had dropped off. So there's some networker issue here. But uh, uh, I just wanted to add something more that uh, um, having done this, what Oscar has been narrating and uh, on issues of uh, getting involved in the in the process of deinstitutionalization following the guidelines. One of the things I, I will not add more, but one of the things I realized is that maybe we need to do and I don't know even, even other countries maybe can do it, is to explore the different types of institutions. I've realized that, and, and uh, what was coming to me uh, is that maybe there is need for us now. The project helped us, like our minds to now, to stick on the institutionalization. You know, when you do a project, and when like now we come and we are talking about it all the time as you move, as you walk, there's a way your mind begins thinking in that area. What can be done? What can be done to bring this, to make this a reality? So one of the things that I, I found that is that we need to explore the different types of institutionalization. First here in Uganda, there are different types. Even in those meetings with the departments, we also talked about them, but briefly, but what was coming to me that maybe in future, if when we get more resources to build on this project, it's important for us to, to maybe to do like a documentary with the stories where people here in Uganda, what they have experienced in the institutions and in the different types of institutions. Like just within this week, one of our member was taken to, to some traditional healers who were keeping him there, but he was on ropes. The hands and the legs are tied together. You know, you are, they have bent you, 
the back is bent for hours, the hands are tied with the legs, just because you were fighting, refusing to be put on ropes. And even when he was there, they began putting certain chemical, you know, things in his eyes, in his mouth, in his ears, where I speak now, yesterday we visited him. He has an issue with his ears now because the ears is now bringing out, because of what, what they did to him there. But when we, we have these stories in a kind of a documentation, documentary, these are the things we are going to use in advocacy against institutionalization of all forms and of all types. Yeah, I just want to end here. I, I believe even our time has triumph is over, but that this is like what is likely to come out of so far the work we have done and what we plan to do as we carry out the advocacy so that people can see the reality. The, the, the government officials, these officials that we've been talking about who are supposed to support this and to support our government to carry this on and so that what we did can what we are doing in Ginger can also be um done in other areas but using the work we have pioneered here in Ginger. Thank you so much. Um thank you Robina for adding into the um uh the uh yeah so first I would like to ask like uh, the members present here uh from the other uh, uh like other micro grantees uh do you have any questions related to the works um conducted by triumph team in uganda and in the jinja district Rubina, I wanted to uh, ask one thing and I wanted to understand about the, uh, as Oscar was mentioning in the, um, in the, um, in the presentation that uh, there was some capacity building done. So I just wanted to like ask, uh, what were the key learnings about uh, on the, on the DI guidelines on like the, the DI guidelines is full of like, it has like so many sections and so many concepts are covered. So I just wanted to um, ask uh, the, the question like, what were the uh, highlighted uh, areas of capacity building for the stakeholders which you uh, conducted? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, during the meetings, when we were discussing with these government officials, because it is mainly if government does not take on this, if they do not see the importance of this and they do not, we don't have their goodwill, the goodwill of the government because they don't understand, then it will be very difficult for, for the institutionalization to begin taking place. So, um... Some of the first, what we're concentrated on is that now the community support systems, you know, and services that are needed at a community level. Men, most of the discussions were like that because at first among the stakeholders, some, they began by saying, but can it be possible? And now what will happen? How will we do this? We, we had those two people, but then another group was saying, but it is possible, what we need is now, to strengthen the community support systems. And actually in the meeting, we were making each of the departments to bring out practical ways they think they, they themselves as a department are going to put in place. They were tasked by one of the, we, we involved one of the, the disability leaders in Ginger to lead that discussion. They were calling it department by department. They said, uh-huh, Department of Education. What are you going to put in place now that younger people are going to get out to the institution and come in the community? You as education, what are you planning to do? Then they would go to the Department of, of, of Health. What are you going to do to make sure that people are well? You know, and that the services they need, health services to stay healthy, community. Each department was being called, and they would do, they would do, uh, say what they are going to do and their commitments they are making. So what we learned 
one of the learning is that uh, first of all, many of our government officials who are in key positions did not have what? Did it, many did not have the full right information about the institutionalization. Some of them had not even heard about it. So what we learned is that they, it is still a big gap that we need to work hard to make sure that the, the key policy makers, the key decision makers really get to know and appreciate the, the, the institutionalization and the guidelines that have been given. Another learning was that, that uh, we have two groups still in the community, among us still the policymakers. Some are, they are, we have that, that group that is saying, but can this be possible? Because they are used to the other, the old way that whoever has a psychosocial disability or a mental health issue should quickly be taken away from the community and taken. So we know that we have that group and we need to see to less strategy, strategically, how do we win them to this other side of the group, which is saying it is possible, but it is us to put things like this, like this in every department at a community level. So that was also learning that there is still need for popularizing, popularizing the, the, the DI guidelines. Because the government, even if it is there and it received it, they are not talking about it. We are not hearing it maybe on TVs, on radios, until us, we came out and began talking about it. So there is need to put more effort on popularizing the, the guidelines, the DI guidelines at different levels. Because now for us, we just began just a small local level here. And yet the local level is supposed to have received this information from there, the other higher level, which supervises them but they had not received that information. So we see that there is a big, big gap in the area of knowledge and in the area of appreciating the guidelines. Maybe I can stop here at the moment. Thank you. I don't know whether uh, Oscar is back. Any other learning that I've not talked about? Waka was asking us, Oscar, if you are, you are able to hear. Oscar was asking us, I mean, uh, Waka was asking us about the learning. So me, I've just talked about the big gap, knowledge gap, and also the goodwill. We have a group that is willing to begin working on the issue, but we also have another group which is saying these things are not impossible, no, they are not possible. So we are trying to see that there is need for strategic advocacy to win this other group on our side. That's what I've talked about. Thank you. Is there anything you want to add? That's if Waka Sorry, we still uh, have some time. Um, Oscar, before Oscar adds something, just briefly to, to touch on Waka's question about capacity building. Um, we did not, he mentioned a few, like if if we, we told them the whole document and everything. No, I think for me, um, I don't think we told them the whole document or everything. I think they, they just like Robin yeah. said, it was about first of all popularizing the the whole thing about the institutionalization and why why it happened. I'm I'm gonna let Oscar continue, uh, explain more. But the the thing that I remember most was that uh, we also had to link it to the CRP, the connection to the CRP, and uh, why why it mm. was important. Um, Oscar, Oscar, if you're there. Because Oscar is a facilitator that day. So, uh, Oscar, you can please yes, can, can um, continue. Thank you so much, uh, Caleb and Robina. And I am sorry, my network is bad. Uh, but um, I, the key point around capacity building, why we are thinking of building the capacity is in terms of generally understanding uh, the deinstitutionalization process, it happened in a very, very rapid way during the consultation process. So, uh, and, and most of the consultations were done at national level. And so we wanted to actually see these departments that are operating outside the city or at the national level. Oscar, we we have lost you again. 
Yeah, so um, so we have got the context and thank you so much um, to the Triumph team for initiating the process at the grassroots level and um, working with the uh, some line departments and uh, also engaging with uh, the disability movement for, you know, for initiating the process and uh, even discussing the guidelines. And this is the starting process. And yes, uh, when you uh, confine, like when you develop some, you know, such groups and you uh, start discussing about the documents and then only the the things will proceed forward. And, and thank you so much uh, for sharing with us the activities which you have been doing uh, during the, uh, the, the, the micro grant cycle. And um, uh, I totally agree. Uh, Rubina and uh, with the, the points you made regarding to the community support systems and access to services but uh, yes going to uh, the uh, going to the different line departments and asking them like if we do this and the document says this is how you can you know this is how you want to give education to um, to people who are deinstitutionalized, but before that, how do we prepare the communities inside the communities? Uh, because until the communities are prepared, deinstitutionalization it will just like go. Uh, people will be deinstitutionalized and then they will go back. And I agree with you that it is not a. Uh, it's a very long term process, and uh, it is going to take time. But uh, thank you for initiating this process, and we are happy that this process is initiated under the micro grants, uh, TCI micro grants. So because we are running out of time and thank you so much for your sharings, uh, Triumph team, I would now request um, Koshish to uh, take uh, lead and share with us about their project. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi, you. Hi, Is yes, it... we can hear you. Oh, yeah, I need presentation. Okay. Did you see my presentation? Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay. Uh, this is uh, very synopsis of our project, uh, sensitized to stakeholders on Article 19 of uh, CRPD living independently and being included in the community. This is project name. And this project has been implemented in uh, three provinces of Nepal, like Bagmati, Karnali, and Gandaki province. Uh, the project duration is uh, June to December 2023. Uh, this is just synopsis. And the project has been utilized 99%. And I am from Kumari Kumar from Kosis. Uh, the project goal is definitely to sensitization of stakeholders on living independently and being included in the community. This is the, our project goal. Uh, as per the project goal, uh, we had major four activities like uh, translation of DI guideline in, into Nepali language, orientation to respective province uh, staffs uh, about the project um, along with the DI uh, process uh, on social and social inclusion. 
uh, and third uh, activity was conduct OXAP at the province level and fourth is reporting and documentation major four activities has been conducted in during the project period and the project implementation steps are many steps like uh, translation of DI guideline into Nepali language, organize uh, online orientation with the respected province staff and coordination meeting with the like-minded organization, especially with the right based organizations and the cross disability sectors in the province level, all the province level and conducted informal meeting coordination with the Ministry of Social Development of all provinces uh, and finalize the date of the OXO because the because of the more uh, engagement is necessary with the Ministry of Social Development for inclusion of people living with psych so psychosocial disability in the community. So we had engaged with the uh, Ministry of Social Development and developed a schedule on the OXO and uh, prepared the presentation for the OXO. For example. Uh, we had mainly uh, four areas. Uh, one is uh, sensitization on UNCRPD Article 19. And uh, second is uh, reflection on human rights situation of people living in psychosocial disability, underrepresented disability groups, uh, based on our uh, research document of courses. And third presentation was focusing on the government policies and program, especially on the uh, Sadak uh, Manav Mukta Avyan of government, uh, majorly uh, four types of uh, pre uh, uh, presentation has been prepared during the time of the workshop, in between the time of the workshop and conducted workshop in the province level. This is the process. And what uh, project supported courses uh, towards uh, community inclusions, uh, the institutionalization and thematic advocacy uh, as per the questions of uh, uh, our schedule. And uh, that was the project had supported courses to clarify the concept on DI in community inclusion process. It was very good opportunity for us during uh, for this from this project where we learn more about the community inclusion. Uh, social inclusion and deinstitutionalization process and the agendas of social community inclusion uh, integrated into the various meeting and works of, uh, of courses. This is also another support for us and courses has also systematically advocated uh, on the agenda of the de deinstitutionalization and community inclusion for the government per periodic plan. Uh, in this time is the uh, government has been uh, engaging for the five years planning process on uh, periodic planning process. So we uh, strongly raise the uh, voice on the community inclusion. This is also support for us. And the agenda of on community inclusion, social inclusion has been also uh, reflected our TOC, organization TOC, as well as organizational strategy of courses. We, are, uh, final, have, we have developed final draft for the uh, TOC and organizational um, uh, strategy. Uh, so it has been also reflected in our strategy and TOC. Uh, we are also raising the agendas, DICI, in the various forums of government level meeting and works of, especially on the um, deinstitutionalization and uh, community inclusion. Uh, the uh, sustainability, uh, how do you plan sustain the advocacy and implement of the DI guideline? Uh, as for these questions, uh, we uh, conduct follow-up meeting. We are conducting follow-up meeting with the respective social de uh, development ministries on their commitment and social inclusion of people living with psychosocial disability, uh, which has made in during the OXOF. Uh, we are follow-up on the, this. Uh, this time is uh, this is the, this time is for annual planning process. So our staff are engaging for the follow-up process. This is also a sustainability and conduct orientation on respective new courses staff for DI process um, early in the um, uh, joining date and disseminate DI guideline across the courses team uh, and engaging government planning process for the budget allocation and program development of uh, people living in psychosocial disability for the community inclusion process. And engaging with the government periodic planning process, inclu uh, uh, inclusion of the psychosocial disability, 
and raising the issues of the meeting and workshop definitely for uh, for the uh, workshop government along with the cross disability sector and planning to engage in the various process of human rights uh, plan planning to engage in the uh, revision process of human rights action plan of Nepal government. It will be starting from uh, June. So we have planned to engage on, on the process of uh, planning um, process with the government. This is our sustainable plan on uh, for the to use the DI guideline. And learning, uh, major learning is, uh, um, it is uh, basically for uh, new, um, more uh, more new agenda of the inclusion agenda is new, uh, so which has been raising by courses after this project. So uh, our learning is sensitization of the de-institutionalization and community inclusion process is important for policy and decision makers. It is very important uh, as per our learning and more collaboration with the right based organization as well as cross disability sector is important for to raise the joint voice on the inclusion of uh, disability sector, especially with people living with psychosocial disability. Uh, another learning is raising the voice of right holders is more important rather advocating uh, for advocating the issues on uh, social inclusion. The issues on DI are necessary for uh, amendment of the policy framework of the uh, countries. Uh, we are, uh, we will continue engaging on that. Engagement in the government planning process is important for inclusion of the program as well as budget. And uh, so, uh, more impactful uh, moment from this uh, micro grant project is uh, this period, uh, uh, I already uh, expand, expand about the um, government uh, periodic planning process, which has been started from the August 2023. So it was really good uh, for the sensitization of policy decision makers on the social inclusion and community inclusion, including DI process. Uh, this is very important uh, time I think in during this project, and it was also really good time to raise the voice uh, through people living with psychosocial disability and the cross disability sector uh, on community inclusion with the uh, policy and decision makers. And the third is the uh, study findings, the situation of human rights violation, uh, underrepresented disability groups of Nepal uh, conducted by COSIS was effective in the sensitization of policy and decision makers during the uh, oaks of, or during this oaks of one session has included on it. And I, I would also like to share some challenges uh, during the project. Uh, it was really um, not uh, easy for the coordination and collaboration with the multi-sector, uh, multi-sector, uh, multi-sector like government and other uh, allied agencies. So it has taken more time uh, definitely, it is a short uh, term project, so it felt some pressure, time pressure, and it uh, another uh, challenges was the earthquake happened at Surkhet at the same day of the workshop at Surkhet on 3 November. There are the major uh, challenges of the project. Uh, I would like to share some pictures of the workshop. This is the Bagmati province. Uh, Oksop, Secretary of uh, Social Development presented, and this is group photo. And this is the picture from Karnali province. Uh, we uh, presented our uh, perspective as well as group picture. This is from Gandaki province. And some voice has been raised by the people with psychosocial disability uh, through the picture and some coordination meeting. And um, thank you so much. This is some. Um, a newspaper on the related to this program. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Tom. Uh, thank you so much for sharing like what Koshis yeah. have been doing. And I I I, I just now remembered that uh yeah. we have one more uh, like session in the 
uh in the in the in the next like in the next sessions like we there is a there is a there is a dialogue like it's it's, it's so good to see that you yeah uh Koshish have been collaborating with the government yeah. and uh you have shared like some of the challenges and some of the yeah. uh, uh uh so 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 also you have shared like how you have been working with the government nina yeah. here she has shared like how she's working with the government uh, and how we are, you know, initiating this, uh, uh, yeah. the the implementation of uh, the DI guidelines. Um, Triumph has also shared that they are, you know, engaging with the stakeholders. So, so I see that there is a lot of work going on around the sensitization of the stakeholders. Yeah, so sensitization. Can, yeah, yeah. So we can, you know, um, uh, in the next session, we can, um, there will be a dialogue where we can, you know, discuss some of the strategies, like how yeah. as DCI movement, we are going to take this process forward. Um, I... Specifically, right now, I don't have any questions, but okay. but how was the response of the uh, cross-disability organizations to support the agenda uh, in, like, the NFDN, were they supportive? Yeah, NFDN supported, and uh, somehow uh, we also, they also necessary for the sensitization, because the many uh, disability-related people are in the safe house, uh, so they raised the question at first. Then they sensitize after our regular engagement. Yeah. Great. So, um, any questions from the group? I think my presentation was very fast, maybe. It was very quick. Maybe. I was trying yeah. to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> any questions from the other micro grantees <laughs> regarding uh, works in? Uh, in Nepal. I think all are clear. Okay. So we will have a dialogue in the next session and, and, and now I request uh, Wang Xiu from TMA. So hello everyone. I am coming from Taiwan Med Alliance. TAM has been applying for this project and we have do several parts of the work. First of all, we finished the traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese translation of the deinstitutionalization guideline, the DI guideline. Taiwan, Hong Kong, and China has been worked together to translate the uh, guideline into Chinese circle cooperation and Chinese circle understand, general understand kind of uh, DI manual, uh, the DI guideline based on um, Overseas uh, human rights documentation. We try to coordinate Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, the different Chinese areas terminology on those human rights terms in the DI guideline and to find out the most uh, fluent and uh, accurate uh, translation. After finish the translation, we spend a lot of effort to promote it. Especially uh, push the, the CLPD commis uh, commission in the UN to adopt our translation to be uh, to be put in the website of UN website so that other Chinese areas of people can access to the Chinese translation. During our translation, we found that in the Taiwan's uh, legal circle, uh, we also have a lot of changes. In 2022, our uh, legislative 
Council and the Health Department has passed a new mental health law. Because of the mental health laws are too uh, large and in the uh, overall principle level, when it try to pass it, after it passed it, it have to have two years uh, transitional process in order to be implemented. During this transition period, different departments have to make and establish 27 sub act in order to implement the mental the new mental health law. Chin, can, I'm so sorry to interrupt. I can, the voice is very low. Can you speak a, a bit louder? Is it okay now? Can you hear me? Um, can you try again? Okay, I'm trying now. Are you okay? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but the voice is very low. The voice is... I had turned on the volume. Yeah, can you put down. the microphone near your... I'm already talking to my lips. Yeah, yeah, now it was okay. Now it was okay. Okay. Perfect. That's better. All right. Okay. So you can continue. Okay. So the 27 sub act have to be sub regulation have to be finalized by 2024 this year, end of this year. It will be released bit by bit and announced bit by bit that will be detailedly guided how mental health uh, service provider provide their different uh, details of the services. For example, the communication during the institution, the, during the intake process and to, in order to help us to be able to help serve, to use a, a survival angle to understand, survive us angle to understand the new mental health law. What does that meaning to use it and survive her? And to make accurate advocacy to the, to the sub regulation. We have organized many uh, dialogue, many discussion on the sub regulation. We realized that the new mental health law was saying, the government was saying, in order to fulfill the CLPD principle and spirit, to make force treatment Obviously, only be able to access a uh, decision made by the administrative department. Now need to go through the legal judicial department in order to agree on a force uh, treatment. And it also expands the um, area of uh, of a professional in involving in the decision making of uh, force uh, treatment. But we realize that in another term, it seems like it is for human rights protection, but in another term, it given legitimacy to the to the decision. Legitimated more legitimated the force the treatment. So in so our advocacy will be focused on uh allowing 
communication tools to be used in uh, institution. We meet the health department, a psychiatric department to have meeting. Uh, we go on street to protest and ask media to report in order to push pressure to and also work with uh, cross disability organization and NGOs to make sure to, to try to advocate to remove the forbiddenness of uh, communication tools to be used in psychiatric hospital. And finally, we have been able to make the communication tools such as phone to be able to use in psychiatric hospital, in institution. So to break through the um to break through the the blockage of communication of people to communicate with people outside. And especially during the pandemic, this success uh, advocacy has been able to have been, has been enable uh, patients in institution, psychiatric patient in the institution able to call for support from outside and call for resources from outside. And the third part, we do, the background is because the mental health law, another new changes, the new mental health law changes is, it put a lot of financial support to uh, psychiatric mental health uh, department to give social resources, which means, which means the psychiatric and, and health department uh, kept most of the resources on their hand to decide social services to people with psychiatric disabilities or psychiatric patient. Then the resources is not used in the community. It's not decided by the community on how to use it, but to let the uh, psychiatric and health department to decide how to use those resources. So we try to explain from our peer supporters and we explain how we use the government services. Our experience, what we experience, how we have been um, manipulated. So we advocate for a distance, a good distance between us survivor and use user must build up a distance from the medical department, the medical uh, people. And we need to get the resources on the community, inside the community and used by user and survivor to build the social services in no, instead of letting the uh, medical departments to take charge. So we written a detailed action plan, a, a white paper, we call it, to recommend how we should use, uh, how we should uh, 
request and how we should view the social support system instead of letting the social system being manipulated by the medical side. Um, so that's what we work. That's four part of our work. Let, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Well, thank you so much, uh, Wang, for your presentation and about the works which you completed under the micro grant cycle. I just uh, before I go with the question, like I would like I'd like to ask my colleagues here, members, any questions? Why is there so much silence? <laughs> okay, so we'll have more interactive dialogue in the next session, but I just wanted to ask you, um, uh, in the disability legislation of uh, Taiwan, uh, are people with psychosocial disabilities mentioned in the Disability Act? Um, you you means the people with psychosocial disability community or uh, a bigger kind of like a cross uh, disability community, their reaction to the mental health law? Mm. No, 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 no. I'm asking about uh, Taiwan has a disability law. And in that disability law, are people with psychosocial disabilities part of that disability law or not? Well, that's a meaningful question because in Taiwan, we, we have the mental health law and mental institutional uh, user and survivor, they are not necessarily being determined as a disability community. Because if you want to be have the disability identity, you have to at least visit the psychiatric more than six months. You have to be a stable, quote unquote, stable uh, mental health patient. Then you can apply for the so-called disabled identity. Majority of the uh, user and survivor of psychiatric does not apply for the disability identity. For example, myself, I do not have a stable uh, mental health uh, visiting record. Sometimes I see a doctor, sometimes I do not. So I do not able to obtain a disability identity. Okay, so, it, so this means that there is a challenge uh, that there is like... Uh... Uh, in the law, it says to be a person with psychosocial disability, you must be visiting the psychiatric hospital at least for the six months. And so this is this is well noted. Okay, so that was the only my question. And I would now request uh, Chinta, CAF. Hi, I'm Chinta here. Uh, I'm from NCS CAF, the founder, and I'm also attached to TCI. <coughs> um, our project was on uh, cross disability movement for community inclusion. Because we have a cross disability platform called Layman's Den, through which how we have. Uh, got involved and uh, started community inclusion with the micro grant project. 
because uh, by for introduction to that, I, I will be covering the Sri Lankan context and then what are the micro grant activities and the learning on this community inclusion process. In Sri Lanka, it's presently uh, undergoing a severe economic crisis and that has increased like a 30 percent increase in persons with mental health conditions and actually this is who have occurred for psychiatric treatment but many more they are hidden in the community then there's also scarcity of psychotropic medication and there's increase in suicide rate and labeled when diagnosed and lost opportunity to do a decent job because uh, even people lost their job after diagnosed and majority are not ready to open up and not confident to reveal their status in the community. There's also, uh, they are subject to uh, discrimination, bullying and abuse, mostly at institution level, even reporting deaths due to such action. There's no support structures in the community, no safe space for connecting with their peers. Thus they're living in their own world. Um, many engage in some kind of livelihood to support their families and among them are breadwinners of the families as well. Oops. In because of the situation in the country, political priorities were diverted from community development. So they Government doesn't have money, they say, for many of the work that we are suggesting. So, what are the micro grant activities that supported us? Actually, if I go to the uh, goal of why we want to do it, it was um, uh, the project in Sri Lanka was to initiate community inclusion action towards destabilization interventions in partnerships with layman's day. It is a cross disability platform because uh, we we actually gone through the institutionalization um, guide. But in Sri Lanka, the thing is, first we thought the community has to be prepared to accept these people and for them to live in the community because the stigma is so high in Sri Lanka. So we thought let's do some kind of developing a model uh, for community inclusion. So like you see it, like what we are promoting is that before them becoming into a status where their rights are violated, it is important as soon as they, um, they, they themselves identify themselves as a person who is having some kind of mental health condition to go back to where they were as a productive member of the society which is a challenging thing, but still we thought that that is what we should do. Then in Sri Lanka, it is mainly the medical model because still they are called mental patients. And then the solution mostly they suggested institutionalization. So measures they mostly think it's a treatment and therapy and then their participation is expected in the primary health care level clinics or hospital. So this is how the country is and then what where we are going to do is like going to reach is the accept the social model. So we call them like persons with psychosocial disability or mental health conditions. And we think the solution is acceptance and inclusion by the community. And then to do that, we need to have community support systems, and then they will be participating in the social and economic development. So LCS CAP led a project, uh, the process was like first to sensitize the community on the effects and issues faced by persons with mental health conditions for removing attitudinal barriers through community consultation. Then the next thing we thought was you sensitize, but whether they have the confidence, because to build confidence and encourage communities and service providers to include and support persons with mental health conditions is required. Then to encourage mental health professionals to collaborate with service providers from other sectors. Because at the moment, they think that treatment and therapies can 
solve it. But that also uh, restricted these people to move around in the community and do their own work. And they are being, you know, uh, uh, labeled as a sick person. So sick persons cannot do anything. They are not productive. Then the fourth one is to advocate and provide support for formulation and effective implementation of inclusive national and provincial policies and practices. Uh, so we were initiating and gathering information on to support all these activities and to see how it is like if we are to prepare the community, we are to get the people out from out from these institutions, how we can prepare the community. So that is what we would do. So basically, uh, we because it was like more like a transitional state because Sri Lanka, it is medical model is practicing by the institutions. So they are talking about rehabilitation and we are talking about empowerment. So under the project, we have completed not all the activities because it's a six months project. So we were able to first do the consultation where psychosocial disabilities as their own word, own voice. So equally, like in, in small groups, they work and in the consultation and then their issues are identified along with other community members because we don't believe in exclusive kind of activities. Then we also did some analysis of life experiences with them so that they will understand why the, how it has happened and what are the reasons, what are the causes so that they can control those to manage their condition. Then there's also some kind of peer support happened automatically by the persons with mental health condition helping others who have undergoing some crisis uh, situations or when they are in need. Then we, we did with the community mobilization to get towards the social integration, then towards kind of inclusive community programs and advocacy for inclusion. So when I say the medical model is mostly passive recipient and in the case of our model, social model, it's the active members of the community. So this is where we are heading under this program. If I say what are the real activities happening under the micro grant in that short period, uh, it's mostly on sensitization and formation of community support structures. So we did community consultation workshops, about three, and then there was a formation of volunteer committees for inclusion. It's about comprising about 100 volunteers who came forward, including persons with psychosocial disability. Then they the same workshop, they were able to do some kind of action planning for inclusion of persons with mental health conditions or psychosocial disabilities. So we got three action plans. Then experience sharing workshops by NCS CAF members, which has happened in Angurum Palace, Palace, Bitwell, and Advocacy, because NCS CAF was uh, started in 2008, and there were mem there are members who are in it. They are actually uh, operating independently and you know as empowered people so we before move on to other consult other villages we really wanted to get their uh, get their experience and to get their recommendations so we got them together and did this uh, experience sharing workshop for us to learn um, then we also started somewhere the sensitization service providers and decision maker because we did kind of a stakeholder mapping with the volunteer committees and organized partners who are organizations of persons with disabilities. Then we share the findings of the community consultations at divisional and district coordinating meetings, mainly by the OPD partners. Then meeting with responsible authorities because these volunteers have met because they are actually the disability advocates who when they meet people, officers, when they go for their thing, they also introduce uh, what is the learnings of the project and also wanted them to uh, join in. Okay. So, for instance, like the village agents, counseling officers, social service officers, medical officers of health and their teams, divisional secretaries and assigned officers in other sectors like economic office, development officers, 
Of course, the community police units also in some places. So it is like educating them about the project and also getting their inviting them to collect. The next activity was on peer support and community intervention. So there are like this, we haven't uh, really invested any money from the micro grant. This was by the volunteer committee and also the members who are in the volunteer committees who are having psychosocial disability. They were attending to immediate needs and crisis situations affecting the persons with mental health conditions. So there were three direct interventions. One is like two, uh, like preventing suicide attempts and one also supporting um, you know their food needs kind of and then another one is also because I forgot there's another one which is actually uh, educating the community and um, because the person was about to commit suicide because the community was against the person giving a wrong sort of uh, connotation for what happened with the child and uh, so another member who is with psychosocial disability has intervened with the counseling. Then they also do like mediation and referrals to support services on such situations because either they think that somebody else has to be intervened, counseling officer or the police in the sense that the person is secure uh, or even like getting other organizations to get involved. Then capacity building where project orientation workshop has been done by the NCS CAP, where the participation of WOPD teams and community leaders, there was 29 participants from Southern Sabaragamuan, Uwa Southern Sabaragamuan, Southern Korea. Then we also like, while doing the project, we were discussing with people, we were doing process documentation and analyzing or extracting information from that we use for advocacy and other, you know, like educational purposes. So, so there were live stories, 20 live stories developed. There was three process documents and then we had like special banners. We developed for social media campaign of what we need. We actually did it for, uh, we did a proper banner we can use anywhere. So it's 24 banners we developed based on with messages. Then participating because rather than, you know, we ourselves doing the advocacy, we joined with other advocacy campaign. So because the members of the Lehman's Den Cross Disability Platform, they were doing like Disability Day. Uh, then there's another special campaign, uh, kind of a petition uh, intervention, started by Can Image, one of these members, and uh, on a murder case at National Institute of Mental Health. <clears throat> so we were also kind of signing, and then we also got our, our teams to participate. Then provincial advocacy forums in U.S. Southern and the CAMI, uh, another organization, they are doing action research, and we were part of it. So we also use the issues and recommendations uh, representing persons with psychosocial disabilities in their provincial action. Um, then we also participated in the advocacy planning workshop uh, convened by the opposition leaders office because they wanted to take the issues in the parliament. So those are the main activities we did during the uh, micro grant program. And these are the volunteer teams who are joined in supporting the persons with psychosocial disabilities at village. So this happened in four villages. They also did the stakeholder map, and this is how we did it, because at the moment in the medical model, we got only, uh, there's no sensitization for inclusion, so it's only treatment and therapeutic intervention, mostly treatment done by the psychiatrist, medical officers, mental health, mental health staff, Cleaning it through the clean. But when we did it, there are a lot of other people who can be uh, supported, who can support us. That is, the peers and community can actually sensitize for inclusion. Primary health care clinics can also be used in educating their who are coming into the clinics. Social development stakeholders and economic development stakeholders can play a big role in sensitization and. I did 
you know, getting them to come out. Then therapeutic interventions, not only the mental health people, but also we ourselves can do. And also there are a lot of uh, like occupational therapy kind of thing can be happening on the social development and economic development. The only thing that we don't call it therapy, we call it like getting them participate in those programs. Then mobilizing or social animation. Yes, the, the best people are the persons with lived experience in mental health issues, mental health conditions. So uh, they can, because we use human library concept in educating service providers and others. Uh, so that we have found very effective. And of course, social social service officers, development officers can support the economic empowerment, of course, we as well as economic development stakeholders can do. This is what generally when village level in detail they have identified, but in general, these are the sectors who can be involved in um, community innovation. Then I will talk about what are the learning and challenges. During this six months project, we learned that after sharing lived experience of persons with mental health conditions, at the community consultations. The community leaders and service providers are ready for, to provide support and include them in the community actions. But further support required from NCS CAP in the process of their inclusion, that is volunteer capacity development, addressing essential needs, changing attitudes of family members who are reluctant or opposed for participation and inclusion. After the community consultation workshops conducted by NCS CAP, Service providers and community-based organizations are keen to support and include persons with mental health conditions, but they expect NCS CAP to help them with capacity development to proceed with inclusion process. Without any mobilization efforts by the NCS CAP, a few persons with mental health conditions who joined the uh, volunteer committees for inclusion have in intervened in supporting their peers during crisis situations. Many persons with mental health conditions who participated in the community consultation workshop still not ready to introduce them as persons with mental health conditions due to high level of stigma and exclusion in the communities. But more, more than 30% who joined the volunteer committees are such persons. So we hope that they will come out as human books to share and in the, in the future. Organ the leaders of organizations of persons with disabilities who are members of the Emergency First Disability Movement willingly advocate for persons with mental health conditions at provincial and national level, even in the absence of NCS can representation. So that we thought very positive uh, because, because we as NCS CAP is based in a, uh, you know, in southern a remote village. So we cannot come to uh, every national event the others are taking the lead on that. So like Enable Number Foundation, Kamid, Navasana, and WOPD, we provide, when we provide information, they share that in their circles of And thank you. Thank you so much, Chinta. And uh, about the Lemons Den Network, uh, I think it's a very strong um, coalition based in Sri Lanka and has the potential of, you know, working uh, in collaboration with various uh, INGOs, development practitioners, uh, decision makers, policy makers, governments. And, and I think uh, NCS CAF can make full utilization of the layman's den team for the community inclusion and deinstitutionalization of uh, persons with psychosocial disabilities at provincial level as well as at the national level thank you for the presentation i before we proceed uh, uh, to the next part i wanted to check like if there are any questions uh, from the group Anyone? Yes, Wang. Uh, 
，再麻烦那个呃，去帮忙翻译这样子。嗯、呃，就是对，刚刚关于自工部分，我、呃、真是让让让人感到很很惊很惊讶呢。就是有提到说，好像有呃将近一百个自工吗？那呃，算是组成一个委员委员会的一个形态。那想想请问是说，呃，这些机构你们的组成，大概，呃，比如说可能是亲友啊，或者是说，呃，呃，医疗专业人士呢，还是怎样的组成？那以及他们呃会愿意来的呃原因，那以及呃是怎么样去招招招引，就是其实有怎样的一个呃动力让大家过来这样子。那另另外想再请问一个问题，就是说，呃，那就是有那呃，因为有有你有提到说有做了二十个生命的这个故事的这样子的一个呃呃分享，那请问这样这样子的一个呃生命的，是呃如何被重现？呃呃，比如说可能是以媒体呀、啊，或者是说以怎样的方式给传播出去？并且达到了怎样的一个效果？谢谢。Okay, ah、uh, yeah, the I'll ask the first one. How we mobilize the volunteers? Actually, ah,、uh, we didn't、uh, because it is at the first community consultation workshop. Uh, when we first go to a new village, we have a we call it community consultation workshops,、uh, which is normally happened in a you know village temple or a community hall where many people can come. No, like it is like more than hundred people participate, including persons with psychosocial disabilities, caregivers. Then there are professionals like you know field officers kind of and community based organizations. And the community leaders or whoever wanted to come can join in that. So, so our program starts with you not know, sharing a lived experience. Like we NCS CAF has more than one hundred forty membership. So, like we among them there are advocates and who are ready to share their lived experience, like story. So one of them is because these people are actually successful persons, you know. Accepted by the society as either as entrepreneurs or as employed people or who are living independently, like without a burden to the society. So they share the lived experience, and that attract people. The first thing happens is that people will understand that oh yeah, these people can be you know operator like any other person. So that myth they earlier they had the myth that they cannot do anything after becoming.、Uh, After being labeled as mentally ill or unsound mind or whatever crazy, so we use also the when you are using for community consultation, we actually use a person who has been not like you know like a minor kind of mental health condition. We use like people who think as crazy person, so they share the experience and how they have been on trainers, how they have been developed, how the community support them, and、uh, things like that. We share. And then the next thing is the persons to you know reflect on that. Like、uh, they can ask questions. Then they are in in groups. They will be given a chance to think.、Uh, how can they help a person with psychosocial disability in their community to become like the one who has been shared her experience? So after the planning, we invite the community, saying that. We would like to support your community. It is kind of like a business deal. If we give our support, we also want you to support us to implement it because we cannot come and do、uh, your work by ourselves because it's very expensive, and、uh, you know, like, and also it is the responsibility of your villagers, it's your relatives, and not us. So, and also we say that if you are actively involved, and then if you improve yourself, there will be also capacity. Development、uh, programs coming in, and we develop yourself also, so that if you move into new areas, we will use you as a resource person. So 
some people, mostly the caregivers join because they really wanted to know, to learn from others, how their persons can be developed into a person whom they have seen in a workshop. So they, that's how they get together. They come up. But we encourage persons with psychosocial disabilities to join also when we identify them. When we, because we talk now in a community workshop during tea time and also we encourage them. Why don't you also join? Because we can help you easier then because you will not be in a neglect work. So that is how we develop the, the end of our first day of this workshop. That's the first day of our visit to community. Uh, so that is how they formed into a committee. And then they asked to, you know, first, you know, we don't tell them do this, do that. But we said you go around and just see what they are, see how we can do. Because this is actually look them as, look at them as a human being, not as a patient or anybody, any other thing. Uh, so whatever you can do, they can also do. So just see that how you can involve them. Uh, so this is what, so we give some time for them to do that. And then only we go into the real, you know, developing or capacity building thing. Uh, so that is the first uh, answer to the first question. Then the life story collection. That's it. Uh, because we, uh, this particular 20 life stories were developed by, uh, because we had a training how to do a life story. So all those who have participated in the program, in that program, they wrote their own life story. And uh, interestingly, more than 90% of them were having some kind of mental health condition, which were not being, you know, themselves in charge. Because when they were telling their stories, most of them were crying. And uh, then they wrote it because it is according to a format, they have to do it. So we share the format and they do it. And I should say that I never expected like 20 life stories in, a, in a such a, you know, like a, in a very good uh, kind of writing, with writing skills. Because especially there were persons, there are a lot of persons who are in psychosocial disability. They wrote their stories and we just have to edit it. But they are, we use it actually with their consent. Of course, we can share it. Uh, some they have written in other names so that they said that I don't want you to reveal my thing. But in our purpose was to understand how they get this situation. So what are the reasons or the causes? So that will help even medical staff, the mental health or psychiatrists to understand. They use it. They use our people to understand how these uh, mental health conditions are happening because there's no other way other than ICD-10, but they're not sure about that. So our psychiatrists use uh, NCS CAF members uh, to share their stories so the doctors can understand and analyze it. So that is one part that we do uh, in our general in our NCS CAF approach. So life stories can anybody write. You have to believe that anybody can write, anybody can express, and it's just a matter of editing at the end. Thank you. I hope that I have given the answers to one. Yeah, this is perfect. Thank you for the responses. And hope it has clarified, uh, Wang, your questions. Okay, that's perfect. So before we uh, move to the next part, I want to screen share a video. We were trying to play this in the beginning, but uh, we'll try now once again. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Fiza, can you, like, when I play the video, so okay. let me know if you can hear the sound of the video. Yeah. Can you hear it? 
yeah i can hear it but uh, sahi nahi uh, it's not clear yeah but the is the video running in a like a smooth yeah it's smooth it's 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 moving in a flow yes yes yeah but we, we later on we can then share this with the uh, participants and our members all of our members can you see the screen still yes okay I hope that uh, you all were able to watch the video. Okay. I can see a lot of hearts, claps, thumbs ups. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So, yeah, just uh, one request we would want to make. Um, uh, if you want to like share some more pictures with us so that we can, you know, um, um, you know, we can... Uh, even improve the video because uh, there were some some pictures that were not very clear but we tried our best and if you can share some more pictures with us we can you know uh improve it and and then share it with all of you and also put it on the social media okay so, we can share. yeah thank you uh, email yeah you can email you can email yes. Uh, okay. in the same loop in the yeah in the, in the micro grants one yeah um uh, so now I will open the floor uh, for all of us to discuss um, um, and have a dialogue on um, how like the micro grants have supported in the capacity uh, building of the organization and how it has supported your organization. And we want to learn this from you, like how even how what is needed from our end even to enhance the program or make the program even more better. And um, this is with regards to the program. And then on the second part, I want to ask you as part of the continuation of this thematics, like deinstitutionalization and community inclusion. Mm -hmm. This is a thematic which uh, for which like we are working since many, many years. And I think it will still take many years to uh, continue the work of um, uh, on this uh, on the on this uh, on these thematics. So on these thematics, I I wanted to check like what else we can you know as a family of micro grants as TCI family, uh, what we need to do and at the program level also I wanted to ask you like on the management part where the 
tools helpful have the uh, uh, enhance your capacity uh, the reporting was fine or it was less uh, did we ask much information or were there uh, was there um, the information was we asked was very very less um, or uh, or do you think there should be like some mentorship sessions between the uh, program going on um, so I, we would like to you know capture all of these uh, things to make this program even better for the next cycle so I would like to, and I'll request all of you to, you know, just open your microphones, open your cameras, and let's have a discussion. Let's have a dialogue. Shall I share one, one point from Nepal? Yes, yeah. yes, not one <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I also presented in my presentation uh, about the sensitization. Uh, the, this is the uh, it is important topic for uh, UNCRPD uh, on social inclusion. But the in Nepal situation of Nepal is still necessary for sensitization uh, for um, uh, policy makers uh, as well as stakeholders and cross disability sector as well. So. Uh, we um, it is just opening uh, point opening opening in last six months just for orientation just for engaging uh, for some province so but it is necessary for larger uh, engagement for inclusion and deinstitutionalization process uh, Nepal, of Nepal uh, because uh, the most of ninety uh, around ninety nine percent ninety five percent people with psychosocial disability are in this um, safe house in Nepal. Uh, and there is no clear uh, guideline for uh, social and community inclusion uh, of people living with psychosocial disability uh, with the government. Uh, as they also allocated a um, huge number of budget for institutionalization, rather community inclusion. So it is necessary to um, continue advocacy uh, awareness and sensitization for people living with psychosocial disabilities as well as cross disability sector and owner of safe house uh, safe houses and uh, uh, other sector in nepal uh, i think uh, in my uh, issue is the necessary for the sensitization first for larger level on the uncrpd as well as deinstitutionalization and community inclusion worker from uh yes yeah. Major so, one one it's, yeah 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 so 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 this is good like uh, uh uh we can also you know keep sharing in between like whenever there is a point uh yeah. pops up. um so i have taken a note of this that this is the continuation of yeah continuation of stakeholders um on deinstitutionalization crpd and this is yeah. all that what we are doing already and yeah. we keep doing this um uh, um, it is not enough, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll yeah, keep doing this. yeah, yeah. It continues, and uh, another is uh, another point is uh, all. I think Nepal and along with other countries should um, should engaging in the government uh, policy framework as well as planning process and implementation process as a watchdog for the inclusion of uh, inclusion and community inclusion and deinstitutionalization process. Yes. I think thank you so much yeah perfect anybody else uh richa feel free to jump in as this is like the part which we have to cover for our learnings part and you know developing the program for the next year also it will help us in reporting also Um, okay. Anybody else wants to share something um, regarding the program development, improvements? Uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead, Nina. Uh, so uh, for Indonesia right now, we still, uh, IMSA will 
in this uh, maybe in April or uh, the early April or May, uh, we will uh, want to doing some lobby or uh, an audience with the government because uh, from the seven derivatives, just one that uh, finally uh, have a uh, legalized in Indonesia, the six, the six uh, derivatives still on working. So we think that because the one is not really have the disability and of course the psychosocial disability perspective at all. So we want the six that still in the process will have the our uh, our perspective the first uh, we we work, uh, we will work about that and then right now we with the working group with we work with very closely with the government uh, the human rights uh, ministry we work about the guidelines of the i and the CI uh, right now because uh, we have the roadmap but we still not have the, the good guidelines we still use the guidelines from the the one that international have the guidelines the UN guidelines about the institutions so right now we work with the government and the, one of the social uh, civil society organizations to work on the guidelines. Right now, Dede goes to uh, Nusa Tenggara Timur in Kupang to work uh, closely with the government in there. The one of the, uh, uh, like, uh, not the national, but in the district. Uh, province in province so we yeah. want to uh, uh, get the data from there about how they think about the, the institutions in the districts not all, in all so we will conduct in to the national level so okay this is great so what i understood that you are uh, you are contextualizing the di guidelines uh -huh. at indonesian level right yeah uh, we we conduct uh, uh, the, the institutions for Indonesians. Okay, so like you're doing the, uh, you are contextualizing the DI guidelines into the uh, uh, Indonesian uh, Indonesian context. context. Uh, but we we work to the uh, the from, we have a lot of island, right? So we yeah. take from their perspective too, uh, because the DI guidelines, it's very international perspective. We want that a local perspective too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Chinta, uh, sorry. Before Chinta, can I can I request if Richa has some things to ask uh, from Nina? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Vakar. Yes, Nina. Just just adding, just like building up on your uh, point that you mentioned right now. I uh -huh. I was interested to know that if the Indonesian government has like taken up to the di guidelines like you know are they i'm i'm sure they're aware of it because of the work that imha is also doing with advocacy uh -huh. with the di guidelines but is there any active engagement or initiative from the indonesian government to work with the guidelines like are they already working with them uh, i think uh I don't know. I don't really have the information about that. But the mm -hmm. Ministry of Health is they right now talk about the institutionalizations, but they not really understand what is the institutionalization in the perspective from the psychosocial disability. They they just think that we need the the institutions, but they not really understand the, the meaning of and the perspective why the people with psychosocial need the institutions. They not really uh, take from the, the institution guidelines that we have or already have in internationals. They not really take from that. So that's why we we work with the 19th uh, ministries and one of. Uh, civil society organizations we have the working group right and we work to conduct uh, what is the, the institution means mm -hmm. uh, that uh, answer the needs and the challenge from the psychosocial people why we don't need the institutionalizations for people with disabilities 
Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Nena. That's helpful. So, from what I understand, that uh, Imha is working with these ministries to also kind of create this uh, sensitization and awareness on the guidelines, and starting with the basic concepts as why we uh, persons with psychosocial disabilities don't even need institutions. Yeah, we work. Uh, we just uh, work for the not only the the institutions, but we want to uh, in one guidelines. We want not about the, the institutions, but we want the how they think. Uh, all the stigma that we have not, uh, we are not capable is gone, and we want the we can uh, community inclusions is also that uh, in there. We want that is uh, in one guidelines. We have that. C-I-N-D-I. Thank you, Nena. Okay, okay. Thank you, Richard. Yes, Chinta. In Sri Lanka, actually, we haven't touched the deinstitutionalization thing because we first want to see that there's a model on community inclusion. Because the, on the other hand, Sri Lanka now mostly um, primary healthcare level clinics are there, so people don't go to this uh -huh, like a, like a specialized hospitals. Um, so, but there are people who are stranded in this home. So we have to really think about how to advocate for it. So I think uh, next phase will be the DI guidelines and uh, getting it into the not only the health sector. I think we have to really work with the other sectors as well, because the uh, health ministry is so powerful and they might not listen just to us. So that is one challenge we have. And the micro grant actually help us to now design a model on getting uh, into the community and get them involved. So that is something we are so thankful to TCI. Uh, so we can continue that maybe with some um, fundraising uh, at local level. We've already put one fund funding proposal uh, so, but the next phase, we really wanted to see how DI guidelines can be used in an effective way because WHO and um, ministry so much onto this, like uh, Lena said, they're constructing mostly on the buildings and other things rather than uh, getting people out. So, we have to really start some work there. So that's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing this, uh, Chinta. And I see a very positive point from the program element that the program has supported uh, towards, you know, uh, getting you uh, putting up more funding proposals. So uh, in this regard, I also wanted to ask others also, like how the program has benefited the organization, um, TMA, um, then we have uh, Tam Kumari, Nena, um, Rubina. How, like the, I, I would, I, I would really like to ask, like uh, on the part of uh, the capacity building of the organization and how it has supported, uh, you know, in taking up the follow up work and also in you know in the inside the organization how it has developed your capacity for example you know reporting templates programs management skills um planning implementation of programs reporting so alongside with the thematic areas you can also put uh, some light on this also Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Sir. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Uh, oh, oh, just uh, 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 
的这个范本的一些方式。那呃，的确让我们在行政上面有很大的一个协助。那呃，那我我我自己会比较期期待的，呃，会可能会是说，呃，呃，不只是。钱，因为，呃，而而可能是 TCI 作为一个呃，把大家给召集，把各种 DPO 给召集起来的一个枢纽。那这个枢纽所可以达到的一个串联，呃，不同的 DPO 之间的这么的一个呃位置，也就是说，它可能是一个呃讯息的，那呃。呃，想法的概念上面、行动上面的互相的这样子一个交流跟串接，就说，呃，不一定是作为一个呃资源的提供者，而是一个资源的媒合者。我我我我我是这样去期待的。那比如比如说，我就会，呃，像刚刚在听完，呃，像斯里兰卡的呃这个组织，我就会非常的觉得，哇哦。真是一个多么启发人心的这个行动，那我就很,很想很想要有更多更多的呃接触跟学习，可能那这对这个呃，不好意思，我有,有点讲讲的有点急，因为实在是很兴奋啊，对对对对对，那我是会希望有更多的这样的一个交流跟分享的一个机会，对。那呃，另另另外呃，特别提到一下，就是说，因为台，呃、台台湾的，呃，一个所处在的一个呃政治局势，让台湾政府非常的呃拥抱呃外国的声音，也就是说，呃，台湾人内部。就是我们障碍者内部自己在发言的时候，可能常常不被理会。但是如果说是呃有像国际的力量啊，或者说国际的支持，这些其实是可以给我们很多的这个呃在推展在地运动的时候很大的这个支持。那我也在想，可能可以用什么方式来去呃寻求这样子的一个呃支持，这样子。对，我也在思考这件事情。谢谢。Thank you so very much, uh, Wang Chu. These are very uh, uh, amazing points which you have、uh, shared with us, and thank you so so much for you know acknowledging the、uh, support which you have received、uh, for the administration and how the.、Uh, The how the mentorship and support has、uh, supported your organization to develop its capacity, and yes, we are here、uh, as a global OPD. And、uh, please let us know how and when you need our support、uh, for engaging and supporting you to you know、uh, bring that global perspective of inclusion and sharing uh, 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 the uh, inclusion sharing about inclusion from the. A、uh, global perspective and about the、um, also the sensitizing of the stakeholders. So let us know whenever you need our support in the secretariat, and we are there to facilitate and mentor and provide technical assistance to our members. So thank you so much once again,、um, Wang Shu. I think Rubina was saying something. Hello, thank you so much. Yeah, um, the coming on of the micro grants is a great opportunity for us as a, a as an organization.、Uh, first of all, at first we used to have uh. Okay, we've been our main partner has been Disability Rights Fund, but they have been encouraging that they would like to see us getting some other partners supporting us. Because when you are when you have one partner supporting you, they call it at risk organization, meaning that in case that one partner fails, you will be at risk of not having what projects. So first of all, 
it has raised our, it has added to the projects to the, because before TCI came in, yeah, we, we just had a few, whatever, it has added on to the projects that we are running, which means the organization uh, capacity of handling projects, handling uh, budgets and the finances is, is, has increased. And the trust of other partners can easily now, they can also trust us because we've, we, we can show that we've handled, we've handled other projects. That is one, it puts us in a better position as an organization in this competitive world, as you know, for resources. So we appreciate TCI for that. Uh, secondly, even just the process, the process of applying is also, um, it builds, it continues building our capacity because the questions that are being, they, that they ask us, help us to know, eh, what don't we have yet in place? So this, they are asking this and this, so we should make sure that also maybe we make it better or we think of putting this in place. And that helps the organizations to grow. And then when it comes to real um, implementing of the projects, it has raised our visibility because the resources has, have enabled us to reach certain uh, stakeholders who would not have easily reached. Because you can't just reach them if there's no like these local government officials, eh? they are very busy people. We went to the top, the heads of the departments. They are very busy people. You cannot just go there for just a casual, you know, a cut and say, okay, sometimes they can accept you, but they may not talk long. But when you say, you send them a message, we are going to discuss this and this and this, we receive the support from such an organization and they really see, they come, they give you time with a lot of hope because they see that, yeah, you are bringing something on board. So uh, that one, raising, like uh, increasing our visibility and, uh, and the trust and also trust. Uh, one of the, there was one of the officials, actually, I don't know whether we put, that clip was sent. One of the officials was saying that, yes, now we know that Triumph is not a brief, it's not a brief organization. It's really on ground implementing issues because we reached them, we reached their offices and we called them for meetings and they really saw that, that the discussions were serious issues that can bring transformation in the community. So uh, that's another way. And for us here in Uganda, because of the many things that have been happening and the political situation, if you do not have a good will, if you are not respected or recognized properly by the local government officials, then you can be at risk. Your organization can be at risk because no one will defend you when they are questioning your organization. Even there's a time when many organizations were closed. But for us, they say, now we know triumph. We know you are on the ground and you are implementing and you are doing it. Uh, you are really doing a good work. Actually, one of them said that uh, you are you are supporting our work. Some of the things we you are doing, those are the things we are supposed to be doing. But because of limited resources given to us by government, we are not able to do those things. But in Triumph, you've been able to do this. We appreciate you for for like uh, supporting us to do what we are supposed to do in the communities. So uh, that's one of that, that. Those are some of the things. In one, I don't know whether it may appear like indirectly, but it is it is building on the capacity of the organization, even to deal with stakeholders. <laughs> yeah, the skill, the, the way you prepare to talk with a certain stakeholder. I remember um, we are privileged that we have Oscar because Oscar is a senior, has been senior in. A, in the part in the engaging stakeholders even at a higher level. So we would be prepared that you know when you are going to such a stakeholder, these are the things you must put in place. These are the things. And this has built our capacity as an organization for us who got involved. So and then when it comes to reporting, eh, mm. I I like uh 
There are some things that we are asked that in the past were not even, maybe in the reporting, we're not, we're not detailed to that level. Hmm? The, the way of, uh, is it this, this, this aggregated data, hmm? you know, making sure they don't just mention that, you know, we were around the 27 participants, but who are those? How many were younger people? How many were, were, were women? How many were men? How many were, were among the, 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 the what? Uh, how many had the disability? You know, the disability types that may be participated. So all this helped us that even when, in the case we get other partners, our reporting, which we have learned from, from the templates that are given to us through this project, will help us to make better reports even in other areas or to other partners. And this will also increase our, what is it called, trust of other partners and the organization will continue growing. I would like to stop there at the moment. I do not know whether, uh, mm. is there anything? I don't know whether we still have some time. If we don't have time, it's okay. If we still have time, Oscar has a hand, maybe wanted to add on something small. Yeah, we're just so, running out of time, but we will just, you know, try to capture as much well. uh, maximum as possible. Yeah, so I would like to respond to that. Uh, Fiza, I would want you to take quick action when um, uh, the internet distortion is there and maybe you can mute. So um, I want to make a point here that it has been very difficult for us to negotiate. Uh, uh, this is the third cycle of the microgrant and we are trying our level best to secure more and more uh, resources uh, for our members and you know, enhance the scale, uh, you know, build, enhance the scale of the, um, the opportunity of micro grants so that, uh, because this year we have like uh, received number of applications, number of applications, but we were able to support a few. So we are trying our best in the secretariat and we would need your support also um, to, you know, to connect us with, uh, you all are TCI, we all are TCI, and we are all working together. So whenever you see opportunities popping up, maybe we can tap them and, you know, mobilize more and more funding for and resources for, uh, you know, building the micro-grant program. So um, I think we are out of time, and there is another meeting, and I have already started receiving calls for that, but... Um, so um, if there is any other point from any of the other micro grantees. Hello. Any other points? Bakar, is there, a, could you share about next cycle of micro grant? For the next cycle, we are not sure about right now yeah. because yeah. Um, uh, we are not really sure about it. Uh, we are trying to secure resources and then we, maybe we will be able to do that. I would request to close the meeting now because um, the meeting, the other meeting has just already Okay, no, so we have some time, no problem. Uh, and I would just want to say some closing remarks and thank you so much everyone for joining and sharing about the micro grants projects and uh, how it has supported uh, your works on deinstitutionalization and community inclusion at uh, in your countries. Thank you, thank you so very much. Just wanted to thank you all and we look forward to connect and this platform is there. Uh, so uh, please feel free. We have the micro grants group working and it's running. So any follow up work which you are doing related to the micro grants to the uh, related to this cycle, keep putting up there and and we will be in touch uh, on the DI and CI works together. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you bye. so much, everyone. Thank you, Rubina. Bye for your support. As president, Mr. Bye. Huh? Bye.
Bye bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you, Chinta. Jean, thank you for support. Caleb. Everyone, thank you, Fiza, for supporting the process. Thank you.